welcome to Let's Talk Stupid. I'm Compound. And I'm Prak. And today's episode is Family Will Be Stupid. Yay. Yay. So, yeah, basically, I've just seen a show in Netflix called Modern Family, right? Uh-huh. But no doubt it was a little bit old because. As I remembered it correctly, the first season was produced in like five years ago or mm-hmm. more or so. I'm not sure. So it's not technically modern family anymore. <laughs> it's more like, yeah, old school family now. So I wonder that at one time we always we we might have thought that this show was relevant, right? This show is so us. These characters are so our parents and us. But it's not anymore because our lives changed a lot drastically, and our roles and families also changed. Uh-huh. So, um, I I would really like to discuss with you guys how family will become in the future. Yes, honestly, I feel like it's just five years. I don't think it's gonna be like old school. Maybe it's just like not very. Sort of up to date anymore, but still, I feel like maybe some aspect might be relevant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's still very good, and a lot of humor is still relatable really? because, yeah, we yeah yeah yeah. But you know, I laughed at almost everything, including my own <laughs> joke. So, that's true. <gasps> All right, so. Uh, we've come up with a game. So Proud and me are going to create a sim family, you know, a fake family mm-hmm. of what we think modern family will become in like the next fifty years, or the next one hundred years, or the next one thousand years. So we're going to explain to you how those families look like. Yeah. So uh, should I start first, like usual? Yeah. Of course. Go. We can go first. So I actually got an inspiration from a real story. So a long time ago, mm-hmm. there was a countess who loved her dog very much. So she decided to oh. leave her everything behind to this dog. Basically, grant all her fortune to this dog. So he became the world's richest dog, and he got like initially eighty million U.S. dollars. But because of investments and stuff, it soon ballooned to three hundred and seventy-two million U.S. dollars. So, a very rich dog indeed. And uh, so I got an inspiration from that because that dog's name is Gunter the Third, and he also got a a pup called Gunter the Fourth. I just really like the name. It's like so grand. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So. For my vision, I think that apart from investing in stocks and uh, businesses, his caregiver team will also invest in a company that uh, tries to make dogs smarter. And one day they succeeded. So dogs, the Gunter's family. Um, I don't know his last name, but uh, his oh family God, so sorry, became y'all. so. Smart that um, um, they decided to call them something like Homo K9, basically t- um, a new species. <laughs> what the hell? Um, I I know oh. that it's not um, accurate in like the field of nomenclature because Homo should be something like in the ape line, but um, whatever, just call him Homo K9 because he. Is as intelligent as a human. He can understand human language. He could speak one, and um, um, after more than one probably. Uh, yeah. Um, well, after this family, they also expanded to other rich um, dog billionaires in the world, and we basically got another coexisting um, species. And um, so Count Gunter and. Um, his child just become a public figure, and also they might do some jobs like um, drugs detection or food control quality or interpreter between human and dogs. Um, yeah, that's my vision. It's not actually like maybe not very different from what you have imagined, but I feel like it's gonna be funny. Like 
a dog family standing upright and um, speaking like a typical human household. And like, have you ever seen Gander the Third? Oh yeah, he's cute, man. Yeah, you Google that or. No, I I've I've read about Gander the Third a long time ago, and oh, really? I've yeah I've searched for his picture. He he kind of he kind of looked like somebody's famous dog, but like yeah. brown, right? Yeah, because he's rich, <laughs> you so know, he's good looking naturally. I don't know. It's like rich people dog, right? Poodles and like small poodles. Uh huh. Poodles. Yeah. I, no, this is uh, not. Like, I mean, I'm not sure what's the way. I can't remember what the breed is, but definitely not like small dogs. I I would say it's medium to large dog. Oh really? It's not a poodle, and I might have misunderstood. Sorry, uh-huh. but like you know, I've 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 looked at myself, and when I see Gander the Third, I think, hmm, why am I not born that dog? <laughs> right. It's like, and I don't know how the system works. Like, how could you know that the caregiver are not um, stealing money? I I think I think he's taken care well because like, yeah, of course I think there will be some part that that the caregivers are like overpaid, mm-hmm. but naturally you need to keep Gunther the third alive. In order oh, to yeah. you know keep on, uh, getting payment from this dog. Yeah, and they like, also the like. Contract. Um. He also got, like as I said, he also got a pup called Gunter the Fourth. So maybe they want to continue this line. Oh, I, oh sorry. Uh, they also, the Gunter the Third already died. So the one who is got all the fortune is now Gunter, Gunter the Fourth. And I feel like there's gonna be the fifth, the sixth, the whatever. So, <laughs> and the funny thing about Gunther is that when I searched his picture, mm-hmm. as I remember correctly, he was like he was like a dog, and he was surrounded by like a girl. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, girls that, in bikinis. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> I was like, is that necessary? It should be like, like female dogs, right? I. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any sense, but <sighs> like, is it is it necessary or is it the caregivers who want that? Who knows, right? Who knows? Yeah, like like, how, why do Gunther need female consort of like human species? It doesn't make sense, dude. We can see through it. That's true. Um. Oh, he is. A German Shepherd, by the way. So. Oh uh, yeah, he's a German large. Shepherd. I'm sorry. Yeah, liar. Ra- I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's nice that we see a dog being taken care of so well, but I I feel like, wouldn't it be better if like he shared the fortune with like you know other dogs? For example, they might uh, erect a. Uh, an organization for like dogs without homes. It sounds better that way, but I I know that Gunther cannot make decisions, so yeah, I wouldn't blame him too. Yeah, that's why I told you like uh the caregiver will in in this timeline of my universe will be um appointed to invest in those um, scientific companies that. Uh, try to make dogs smarter so he could make a decision on his own. Oh, so the caregivers are nice then. Yeah, I'll be maybe looking like, forward to the day I get to speak. No, maybe like the countess forced them to um, sign a contract or something saying that oh. they will make Gunter smart um, in my imagination. Okay. And then I'll be looking forward to the day I get to speak with one of the Gunthers. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> I'll be able to climb to their rank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, anything else to add? I'm not really. 
We can move on. I'm satisfied. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, this family that I've named is uh, actually basically consisted of one woman or one man. Okay, let's say woman then because we're so tired of, uh, you know, a man's looking for love from, from robots, right? So let's say a woman, she's very lonely. She doesn't have any, anybody in this world because everybody's so busy doing their work, uh-huh. feeling the mechanism of like the future and something like that. So the easiest thing to do is that uh, she rent a family. Oh, so this kind of family rental already exists in Japan, right? Oh. But this because because it's a huge waste of time if you want, if you rent a family and like actual people because you can employ actual people to do like a lot of work in the future world. Uh, she rent a family and she put on a head VR and use an extreme, extremely smart artificial intelligence mm-hmm. tool kind of interact with her so she got addicted and you know spend time every evening and almost every day with this family bought them to her phone something like that she wanted to have a child with the the ai bots that she met on the vr so mm-hmm. she basically um take a sperm donation from somebody else have a children genetically modified and get a twin so and created a family of her own and then she employed like the ai bot of a guy into her furniture into a furniture in her house oh like her bed for yes. example mm. wow it sounds like a black mirror episode yeah exactly but i can see how this might be possible in the future who knows wow this wow yeah, lots I think of, it's very likely. Mm-hmm. Because right. it involves like lots of technology. I've heard from you, right, that China already impro- uh, approved the genetically modified children project or something. Yeah, you know, actually the reason behind that is because like nobody wants to have kids in China. Like the competition rate is so crazy and when we think of the education system in Thailand as hard or severe, mm-hmm. uh, I think China is like even more than that, like 10 times, 100 times. There are like schools, which you have, like there's like, uh, you know, tutoring schools, which you have to take a test to get into that school. Oh. It's a tutoring school. I've also heard that yeah. same thing happen in Japan as well. Like, it's also very notorious. I just I just feel like we we want it so bad to kind of, you know, blame the system that the mm-hmm. system is bad, but honestly every system is not perfect and the larger the country and the the worst of other factors in that country is the more eminent is like the flaws in the system. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the job of the person who's trying to fix, like, the education system is very hard. Nevertheless, we should try. I don't know. It's just so stressful in China that nobody wants to have kids anymore. Like, the rates dropped drastically. And they... So, nowadays, they don't really have the one-child policy anymore, right? Because it's, like, a very old one they have like one child policy lifted then two child policy lifted now there's no there's not any child policy but people were like we're done okay thank you very (laughs) much but we don't need it anymore Uh well i so but like mm -hmm. do you think that really genetically modified kid can really help solve the problems in china of people not wanting a kid do you mean by like this i have a question do you mean by um like a kid grow in an arja womb or like a kid i don't think it will solve the problem if people don't really have kids from the beginning, right? If you want a genetically modified kids, 
it's mean you change some aspect of that kid, but that kid must be sort of um, that kid should be a result from the parents' consent or whatever, or else then how you don't have the kid at the beginning, right? You don't have the baby, so where do oh. you? genetically modify that. I don't think it's for solving the problem of the population. I mean, as in the way of increasing incentive, because like shine, Chinese people, I assume, oh. they think that they don't want to raise like a stupid kid or like a weak kid who can't really even survive and needed to stay with their parents until they die. So uh-huh. genetically modified means that you guarantee that this kid is going to like have at least oh. abilities to uh-huh. like survive in this fierce world cruel world oh, so would it increase okay. the incentive if it guarantees that your child is going to have certain characteristic oh yeah i can see that well it's i with that sort of asian mindset i do think then that there's gonna be a lot more people but isn't their population already dense how could they control the rate then Maybe like limit I think amount of people who can access the technology. Oh, ah, uh, they're dense, but like, they're filled. They're they're like aging society, dense. Oh, uh huh. And like most of the populations are male, not female. Oh, because so of, then, uh huh. Because of one child policy. And like you know, my mother used to make a joke that oh, if you really want a husband, then you should go to China. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. there's a lot of choice there. It's like the ratio is of female versus male is really different. I'm not sure whether it's like two, uh, one to two or not. Maybe close uh-huh. to that. But like in our country, we're we're entering like also like you know an aging society, and I've already heard from like so many people in my generation. But like disclaimer, we're a kid; we don't know what life is, and <laughs> not everything we said is true. Yeah. So I've, mm-hmm, so I've heard from people in our generations basically saying that, oh yeah, no, we don't want to have kids. We don't want even want to get married. <laughs> we want to be alone for the rest of our life. Sort of things like so. What do you think it will look like for Thailand? Um, honestly speaking, I I don't think. Well, many people said that our infrastructure couldn't keep up with our sort of modern mind. We we got influenced a lot from pop culture, influenced a lot from American thinking, whatever. We got influenced a lot. Our way of thinking got mm-hmm. very heavily influenced by the media of other country as well. So I think yeah. it, it depends on the trend of the world, and I do think that people will have less kids as well. It's not that much of a necessity anymore in our mindset, I believe. Yeah, but like you know, there's a point about. I don't think that I should drag politics into this, but there's a point about when you have a kid. Uh, even though you got pater maternal leave, even though even though you make your husband stays at home and take care of your kids, there's still like some times that you missed. Doing like your labors, from work, and that 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 like, that's why a lot of people don't want to hire women to. A firm because they think that even though woman will not, uh, you know, all went home and take care of their kids, but there's also going to be times that woman spent doing their lab, you know, uh, giving labors and taking care of their babies and stuff. So that's why, like you know, payment rates of women are like lower than men these days. One of the factors. Honestly, I feel like that is just sexist. There are many company who think mm-hmm. of that, but honestly, from my perspective, they're just so ungrateful. The reason you were born was because of your mother. 
it's just like, <clears throat> like you can't be born without those people who take the leaves, and it's just not mm. really. I feel like the real equity equality concept. Um, so equality is like um, you give a person more advantage to make them equal, like mm. right. But for mm. equity, it's like. Give all people the same amount of opportunity according to their situation or something along that line. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. So, um, mm-hmm. oh, I right. think it's just necessary for for women to be granted those opportunity, even though they have to take the leaves. But it's just only natural. We can't control that. Or do you want mm-hmm. men to be able to be pregnant as well? Maybe create that technology. Then, if you want it to be. To be like sort of equal. I th- I think I think what you said makes sense. Like, if there's a technology that can make men pregnant as well, it would it would be a lot a lot better. You know, it would create more sense of equality because even oh my god, I don't want to I don't want to talk about this, but but we need to accept it that. There might be some structural, like biological differences between men and women naturally. Mm-hmm. So if we can sh- alter those biological differences, we can really prove that, hey, we're equal in every way. So, yeah, you you should sometimes take the responsibilities, right? But honestly, um, I think I don't think it's going to be worth. Investing in such mm. technology because what's the point? It's easier and it's less time-consuming. Less, you don't have to use that much resource. You just have to change people's mindset and you just have to accept it mm. that it's only natural that we're different. But it, it's just our physical um, features and everything. And other than that, we're completely equal. Mm, true. Okay, so. I w- I'm really not really comfortable like talking about um, you know, li- like I feel like we're 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 crossing the borderline of family oh. and like feminisms <laughs> and like yeah, I'm sure. not so certain to talk about feminism. It's not like I'm not a feminism. Of course I am a feminism, but I don't think I know much enough to talk uh-huh. in the podcast. And I'd rather support feminism in other means that I'm more sure of, more certain of. Oh, yeah, me too. But let's let's move back to family. All right. So um, yeah. Have you watched uh, an episode of Black Mirror, which like the husband died and like the wife like preserved oh, yeah. his sperms and that's, also yeah. That's just creepy. Like that one that the guy looks sort of like Ed Sheeran, right? <laughs> I don't know why. No, he's not Ed Sheeran. I I mean he resembled uh, Ed Sheeran in some ways. The first time I looked at him, I was like. Hmm. He's not Ed Sheeran. He's a lot thinner than Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran has like a a cute chubby face, but oh, like yeah. this guy, he's got like a thin face and like he got a very thin skinny body as well. Oh, that's true. But he sort of reminds me of Ed Sheeran. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's creepy. Yeah, but if it's somebody you love. Which I'm sure you have because you're not a robot. You have hearts. Oh, uh-huh. well, actually, robots can have heart too. Okay, so yeah, if it's somebody you really love as well, would you do it? It might not have to be lovers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, but uh, well, for me personally, I don't think I'm going to do it. But it well, I could understand people who want to do it, but for me, I feel like. The time, the time you should value is the time you spend with the actual person, or else it's just meaningless. It's just and a substitute. I don't know. It's mm. gonna be different. It might be comforting to you, but I feel like at the end of the day, it's not that person. What is a person? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, what you said is totally right. If 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 we if we know if we have the knowledge that there could 
be potentially there could be a potential substitute for our loved ones then they would think that they last forever and take them for granted mm. but honestly I, I feel like I may be able to say that I won't use it but when the time really comes I might not be able to resist the temptation of using it hmm because it's just comforting and I can see like if you really use your if you really lose your loved ones I can see how like why people would want to do it because they can feel like comforted in many ways I feel like it might be sort of a therapy for (laughs) for those people as well but like you know kind of like we I already think we have that function in our brain already like you know there's like a text message in this episode right well they Uh, like the dead guy would Firstly, they will come in a form of a text. You text them back, something like that. But we already have that function in our brains, where like when we find when we confronted hardship, we're sort of like having a flashback of like the memories of somebody we loved, the mm-hmm. the good memories, their wisdom, and something like that. You can see it more prominent in like animes or something like that. But I'm pretty sure it also happens in real life. Hmm. Like, have you ever had, like, okay, I, I think that us, we're young, so we don't have any dead loved ones, but a lot of times, uh, my mother mentioned, like, you know, my grandfather mm-hmm. and his wisdom when she faced hardship, so I'm pretty sure that we already got that function and we, we probably don't need it if we want it to cope with the death of somebody. Mm, I feel like it's not going to be... Like for all people, but I I think mm. it could be beneficial to some. But yeah, it's not for all people. Nothing is for like everyone. Not well. It's just a very subjective matter. It depends on how you would cope with it. Oh, yeah, but like in the end of the episode of that Black Mirror episode yeah whatever we're talking about yeah yeah in the end of the episode he this guy it's like he he was a bot right so he was initially a bot in in somebody's phone and then he become a bot that can be taken everywhere and then Mm -hmm. he become like a bot in like a fake bodies of her previous husband as a reminder so um uh uh-huh it's just like the appearance but it's not like the his body, yeah. not his flesh. Uh huh. Yes, yes. I just want to clarify that because that's gonna be like even more weird if it's his actual body. Yeah, dude. Right. But like, okay. So I don't. But like, I don't know if I can mention this. But like, they touched each other, right? But it doesn't seem to show that it's weird or anything. It's like, yeah. When when you touch like. An artificial body should it feel weird? Mm-hmm. And like, can this robot take baths? I really have questions. A lot of questions. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe he doesn't. Maybe his bath is a little different. Like not typical shower, but I don't know. I'm. <laughs> probably just like. <laughs> maybe he's waterproof. Who knows? Our phones are waterproof as well. <laughs> Yeah, but our iPhones get dirty from oil, right? And I'm pretty sure, like, that woman, she has a lot of oil in her body, of course. Everybody has oil. Uh-huh. She, like, she touched him a lot, we know. Uh-huh. Oh, honestly speaking, I do... Um, It's, like, a weird habit of mine. Maybe I, I'm the only one who thinks it's weird. So, whenever I mm-hmm. want to clean my phone, like, typical people would just, like, wipe it with alcohol gel, but I would just remove the case and just walk to my bathroom, my restroom, and then just uh, squeeze some, got some, pump some uh, hand washer or soap and just rub it like I wash my hand and just like rinse it with really water. Really? Why? Because it's more efficient and, you know, usually uh, alcohol couldn't remove like grease that much and it's gonna be like cleaner and it's already waterproof. I'm not recommending. I'm not recommending this to anyone because like you can get water damage of course but I made sure to dry my phone so it survived for a long time because I do that very often 
It's just more efficient. Thank you. Overall. Well, yeah, I'm going to try that after this podcast. But if your phone well, got damaged, don't blame me though. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll take the responsibilities. Uh-huh. But I think I think that did well, Wash Buddy tell you to do this? No, but you know, it's just it's already waterproof, and I don't think soap can do any much damage to like your camera. I just avoid the camera bumps and just wash the back, oh. wash the front, or wash the sides, and then just rinse it with water. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I can try it. It's cool. Okay, so what were we talking about? Uh, we talked about how that robots take baths, right? Okay, let's just move on then. So, uh, in the end, they put this this artificial bodies and minds into the attic, and they like locked him away. So, like, okay, so a story before that is like the woman. She like she was pregnant with a child before her husband was dead. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, she had a child. Like years after that, she had a child, and she locked that robots in the attic. So actually, it's kind of like a lot of Black Mirror's episode themes of like robots being locked away <laughs> in like some place they can't communicate with other people. But like, what so do you sad. think? Is they let the daughter see the robots in like each years of uh, the the anniversaries of their death or whatever? I. I I don't know why she locked him up. Maybe because who knows? Uh, there was a scene, right? She tried to kill him or something, mm-hmm. but she couldn't. I I feel like it's just a yeah. waste of technology, and I don't really know how he survived, like he being locked up there. Maybe she gave him food or something, but I don't. No, he didn't need food. He's a robot. He is like self-sufficient or something. I I guess like, he like took some sort of power and eat it. No, or no. maybe he got seemed to like, be light. A battery, battery within himself. I don't know. But I, I think maybe he shut down himself and like opened himself again when he hears something. Oh, that that could Probably. be a great way. To preserve the energy, but I don't know. Like maybe it resemble like she couldn't really forget him, so she decided to just keep him. And uh, maybe she feel a little attached to that robot, but I I still think it's weird. I don't know. I I really have n- not. I really have no comments in this. Like she let, I think she let she let her, her own daughter see the robot because she she probably think that her daughter deserved to know something about her own father. Oh man! And so she let the daughter see the robot, but I'm not sure whether she's also there. It's painful actually to watch because it makes sense in very different kinds of ways. That it's a question you you said that the ro- these kind of robots are not for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. But it's also obviously not for this girl. But she bought it anyway because she thought it was soothing, comforting, and she couldn't tell whether it's for her or not. So after oh. that, how what will you do with the robot if you get stupidly attached? Using tum yeah. using Tumblr's vocabulary. Alright. <laughs> I honestly think that the company should be more holistic. They should provide some advisors or something so that people wouldn't get confused. But I have heard that it's sort of like a pilot, um, pilot program or something that she took, right? Or is it another episode? But usually it's like new technology and it's a pilot, pilot program yeah. and it gone wrong or whatever. Like the yeah. whole sci-fi series. <laughs> yeah, pilot gone wrong exactly, and like the point is that it's really they said that this technology is really expensive. She took it anyway, and then she locked it up in the attic, and she's probably wanna y yeah, you know I I I wanna, I wanna utilize it as much as I can. So oh, I'm maybe. gonna let my daughter see it. <laughs> That's very <laughs> possible. But like if 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 you if you like completely are detached from that robot, you can just like 
don't keep him at the attic if you are detached. Yeah, you you make him do housework. Oh It'll yeah, be a lot better. Yeah, so that's why I don't really understand why she locked him up. <laughs> Maybe because she's still attached and really can't see him, but don't think it's healthy to have him around. Maybe like tell him to change his appearance. I I think you could right. Maybe we saw him in the bad tap like. In the big be- at the beginning of the story, like uh, initially the robot was ship, the robot that was ship was sort of faceless and he doesn't have mm-hmm. any appearance. But when she soaked him in a bath, he turned into that guy. So, oh maybe every time he takes shower, she he could change his appearance. Who knows? <laughs> I think it would be cool if she told him to change his appearance to like turn into Brad Pitt. Okay, this day I like Timothy Chalamet, so yeah, you be him. That would do be my fun. Husband. Yeah, but like it still got the same data set as her ex husband, so maybe feed him some more things about housework and chores, and like you know TV personalities probably. <laughs> that would be funny. He has so much potential. Shame he was locked up in the attic. Right, it's just, and he basically like follow everything she says. Right, so who knows? Oh, recently I just heard the news that um, Elon Musk, uh, tried to started <laughs> <Again>. a pro- <laughs> no, he started a project to create a humanoid robot, and he even promised that next year it's gonna we. They're gonna have a prototype, but I I just think it's just exaggerated to gain media p- attention and stuff. <laughs> Yet, exactly. But like I think I think that humanoid robot is probably possible. But like we need more artists in like the community of like robot building because obviously I tell you, Sophia looks downright creepy, You're and Sophia. after years of improvement. <laughs> She uh-huh. still looks creepy. You can search it up. She's like an AI who can, ha ha. <laughs> I think your joke is very funny, ha ha. Uh huh. That's creepy. Yeah. And she, uh yeah, true. I've heard some opinion about people in this field saying that it's not really efficient to like make a humanoid robot because like. Yeah. As a human, we do different things. Like we do general stuff very well, but for a lo- robot, it's more efficient to do specific tasks instead of focusing on everything all at once. Like you know, I like, do agree. Like mm-hmm. those assembly lines, robots are great examples. Oh. Like, they do just repetitive jobs. It's very predictable. The environment is just the same all the time, and they just have to do one thing. So it's better yeah. to do that. Mm-hmm. But when people talk about humanoid robots, proud, they don't want them to do chores. Of course, you, if you want chores, you can just buy a like vacuum cleaner oh, robot. Oh, that's true. When we talk about humanoid robot, what do you think people think about? They want a robot girlfriend or a robot boyfriend, of course. <laughs> But like, I mean, we've all watched like Detroit become human, right? That's uh-huh. why people buy these kind of humanoid robots to be a caretaker or to be girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Oh, that's true. Hmm. Well, it's in- definitely interesting, and I feel like maybe it could replace those who work as like housemaids or thing. In Thailand, we do still have like the culture of having housekeepers, but. Yeah, maybe they could replace that sort of job. True, but like the the problem is housemate. Yeah, there's a lot of problem with housemates, right? I used to have a housemate, and no, not a housemate, housemates, because one left and another one comes in. There were a lot of problems with having a lot of housemates. For example, they steal things. Oh, that's true. And sometimes they disappeared. Okay, we're not gonna say that, but let I I'll tell you they disappeared for like two or three hours, and then like 
three months, you see that their belly starts to swell. Oh. And we kind of get what happened there, okay? So we don't want that kind of problems anymore. And like you know, a human or a robot that can take care of like kids would be a lot better than like maybe human because they're not really sufficient. Mm, well, but it's gonna be different raising up. But maybe they could do that has very well since they got all the essential knowledge already. You don't have to learn or anything. Maybe they they might be very good at raising up a child. Who knows? And I don't I don't know the impact of like having robots raising your child. No yeah. idea, but I, I I probably I think that there will be somebody writing a book about this in the future. <laughs> I think so too. Okay, so anything else you want to add? Yeah, not really. I think I'm I'm already satisfied from talking about Scanter the Third. So, <laughs> he does. All right, so um. I would like to make a conclusion at the end of our episode that yeah, okay, mm-hmm. even though family changes, but Fast and Furious still is a family film. <gasps> you can go watch it and strengthen your bond with your family. So Have yeah, that was basically that the conclusion. Yeah, right? of course. Have you seen it? Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, maybe you should explain it I to the it. audience. Alright, okay, guys. So you you know Dominic from like Fast and Furious, right? And he he was like he's always think that family is like a top priorities, and he do dumb stupid things because in the name of families, <laughs> like really dumb stupid things. He would fight the galaxy for like his family, even though he might lost. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically the meme. So we put doms everywhere. Yeah. So good. When somebody's facing, yeah, when somebody's facing a really strong opponent, Dom burst in and say, "Family." That was like there was this one meme, like it's it's a short video, like a, a kid asking Dom, like pre- he's that sort of like portraying Dom's child, and he asks Dom like, mm. um, "That was the answer to this math question." He said, "It's family," and something like that. <laughs> Yeah, that was like a Home Alone meme, right? Yeah, and like and the boy says, I don't want family! And like Dom bursts in with like a gun in his hands. <laughs> oh my god. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a shotgun as well, so I was like, that's so drastic. I mean, he does okay. say a lot about family. Like. Mm-hmm. It's the point of the film. It's a family film, but it's not a family friendly show. It's a family film. Yeah. Let's just leave it there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. We want to leave you like a light hearted conclusion after what we've discussed is pretty serious, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll see you guys next week. Hey, do we, do we have any question for our followers, our listeners? Hmm. Do you have any? Send us some family meme. <laughs> send Maybe. us some family memes. Well, that would be yeah. great. And you can send us your answers to let's talk stupid. <laughs> that's stupid at gmail dot com. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It's all let's talk stupid. Okay. So thank you very much for listening today, and we'll see you again next week. Bye. See you.